This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video, we're looking at our planet's oceans, and in particular, looking at the ocean basin features of both the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean. Now, both these oceans, the Pacific is obviously by far the largest, and the Atlantic is second largest, but these two basins are awesome to compare and contrast because they are different tectonically in terms of the features and obviously the size, and we're looking at describing these underwater to, uh, topographic maps from each continent across the basins, the other side of the ocean to the continents, and looking at what's going on in each ocean. Now this is a fundamental part of oceanography, looking at the ocean floor, the processes, and that can lead into more detailed analysis of each feature and how each basin was created. So as you see, this black straight line is not really appropriate for a curved surface, but it is showing you the line in which the profile will be drawn for analyzing the Atlantic Ocean Basin and the kind of geographic location that we're going to look at from west to east, from North American plate and continent to the European or Eurasian plate continent and the ocean basin in between and the features that we find in different locations. Now, as you can see from this cool kind of graphic is the Atlantic Ocean on the right hand side has different elevations and different depths based on topography. So the darker blue is the deeper areas, the lighter blue is the continental shelf and the slope, and you see the middle section, which is the mid-ocean ridge. So the Atlantic Ocean Basin is dominated by large flat ocean basins and abyssal plains, and the average, average depth is about 11,000 feet. You have a classic passive Continental margin on both the North American side, the west side, and on the European or Eurasian plate on the east side. Now, it is dominated mostly by a large geological feature, which is the Mid-Ocean Ridge, which is found by Hess in the early 60s using sonar, and this extends through the Atlantic Ocean north and south, and also connects into the Indian Ocean and Pacific. But the ridge in the Atlantic Ocean is classically positioned and located right in the middle and you have this divergent plate boundary or constructed plate boundary in the center which is forming the new plates and the basaltic lava rising up. So you have the rise, the slope and the shelf on either side. It's passive so there's no trench, no tectonic activity but you do have the Azores or Azores which are a small island chain in the ocean that's owned by or overseen by Portugal and that is really the only islands that are visible or located in the Atlantic along this profile. There are other islands as well, but along this profile and this location between North America and Europe, we have the Azores um, after the Mid-Ocean Ridge before you get to the European coastline. So again, these are passive margins with no activity, no subduction zones, no trenches. So you have these different gradients of rises and slopes up to the shelf, which is the where the ocean spills over and connects and touches with the continents. And you have the Mediterranean on the east and the Caribbean on the west as the seas. And now we have the Pacific Ocean Basin, an ocean basin that has a lot more water and covers a lot larger surface area than the Atlantic. And it has much more diverse arrangement of features and islands and especially the trenches and the tectonic activity that goes around, which forms the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is classically that volcanism and earthquakes uh, on the Earth, and is an awesome thing to study. So for our Pacific Ocean Basin, the profile I'm going to use is, looking at this map on the west, is the Japanese island of Honshu. Looks starting there and going across towards the east part, of the eastern part of the Pacific, to the Colombian coastline, and it should cover both Hawaii and the Galapagos in this profile. So the Pacific Ocean Basin differs greatly from the Atlantic. Now, the exaggeration of, of elevations and height and distance is distorted because of the profile, but really it's a lot longer, a lot greater distance. So the vertical exaggeration is not there. Now, the, the Pacific is generally deeper on average than the Atlantic, but it definitely becomes extremely deep around the trenches, both on the Western Pacific and the Eastern Pacific. And these trenches differ in the profile, the slope, and the characteristics and how they form their volcanism. So the ocean 
is, well, the profile is dominated by these different island chains and seamounts and the East Pacific rise. Now, this rise is very similar to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Now, a ridge and rise is basically just a difference in elevation and the profile and how sharply it moves up and grows to the actual ridge, the actual point where the lava exits the surface and forms pillar lava. And this is the constructed plate margin that we discussed earlier. And this is set off onto the eastern side of the Pacific and the Pacific Plate and Nazca Plate divide here and they move through convection currents all across either to the South American side with the trench for the Nazca Plate or the J Japanese side with the Japan Trent Trench for the Pacific Plate. So the two trenches on either side of this profile, the J Japanese Trench and Colombian Trench, they are created by the subducting slab, the subducting oceanic plates of the Nazca Plate and the Pacific Plate. And these are subducting due to a difference in density of the basaltic dense rock versus the lighter, less dense Connell rock of granite and andesite. And these are off the coastline and they also cause volcanism, earthquakes and other activity like tsunamis and create the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is the majority of our active volcanoes on the planet. And dotted in between the rise and the two coastlines, which are both going to have the slope, the rise and the shelf, but in different gradients and profiles and sizes, is our seamounts and our chain of islands, both above the surface and below the surface, and are also guyots as well. So these are just formed by, by volcanic hotspots, which are very common in the Pacific due to the thinness of the crust and where various mantle plumes are rising up and forming this magmatic material on the surface, creating our beautiful islands. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.